What's going on people? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. For those of you guys who don't know, I am a police officer from the UK and I react and give my insight on police related content from the internet. Um, so thank you guys for joining me. Today we're looking at how Chicago is trying to stop shootings without the police and this is by Vice. Um, and without any further ado, let's get straight into the video. Let's see what Vice have to say today. This is where I am every day, right here. We're gonna start at Jackson and Pulaski, which is the West Garfield area. This is where it's a hot spot, it's a target spot. Patricia Hillier spends most of her time in one of Chicago's deadliest neighborhoods. She's a violence interrupter, meaning she watches for signs of a fight and tries to step in before someone gets shot. I was born and raised around here. I've lived on just about every block from Congress on down to Madison. You're really part of this neighborhood. I am a part of this neighborhood. I am a product of this neighborhood. Around here, I was a gang member. I was their queen. I was considered the big hat. I was a gang chief, which is why I love being assigned to this area because I get to give back to the community. I so this lady, she's obviously gone through some stuff. She's an older woman and she's giving back to the community. Obviously that needs to be applauded. She said that she used to be in a gang. She used to be well respected in the area, which all, um, obviously being a gang is ideal, but um, she's obviously a person which has impact and her voice should be heard in the community. So let's see if her um, trying to stop crime in the community actually works. I get to rebuild some of the things that I helped tear down. and. With the, with the people. Who's calling? I got a problem. We are mates. You better get it. Oh, gosh. What's, what's going on, Who, you know? What's it, what is this, way? What is his name and what is his name? Oh, God. No point to camera yet. Let me, let me defuse this. Yep. What the f going on? Yeah, I know. Look, come on. Where you at? Come on, holler. Come on, holler. So I think they've had some type of call on their mobile phone that a, an incident is unfolding, uh, potentially some violence, and she's run around the corner to try and sort it out, which is very brave of her. I mean, these guys are from Chicago, so um, even in the UK, we know how violent Chicago can be. So let's let's see what's going on there. I'm literally shaking. What just happened there? So that was uh, a conflict that uh, more than likely was finna turn to gun violence. They had um, guns on them. Uh, fortunately, I knew both of the parties, so I got in the middle and uh, was able to talk one down and put him in the car and make him put the gun away. You saw and the then, gun, though. You saw yeah, it. There was plenty of them. I was able to get them separated and um, have him drive off, and I called him on the phone to make sure he doesn't come back. I'm not done with it though. Yeah. I'm not done with it because I have to. I mean, this, this lady is obviously very brave. Getting in the way of people, toting guns. She could easily get shot by accident. She's obviously very brave doing that. Um, it's only in the video, but it just, I just can't help thinking, other than the fact that she may potentially have a criminal record, she'll be a really good candidate to potentially be a police officer. She'll know who needs, she, she knows who needs arresting. She knows who's out there maliciously. She knows who needs more support. She should be a police officer. She knows the community. If people like her don't join the police and the people she works with, it's going to be people who don't know your community, who live outside Chicago or in nice areas in Chicago, and they're going to come in and all they know about people from your hood is that you guys are threats, so they're going to see you as a threat. And you can't blame them for that. They just want to go home. So if, you, if, if, if there's individuals who have hearts for their communities like this, and you know people, you're the people who should be joining the police to make that difference. This isn't knocking her, this is just my point on that, but she's very brave. Reach out to the party that it actually started, which was, was yesterday, so that he doesn't come behind him. You, you're tracking the whole, this whole story, where this started. I'm, I'm on all parties, all parties. Right now they just scared the hell out of me because of so many. I'm just glad I was able to get him to leave, even if just for now, we stopped the shooting. Violence interrupters have been a part of Chicago's neighborhoods for more than 20 years. 
But the program's now at a critical point. That's because, for the first time, the city's made a major investment in it, backing it with $23 million since 2019. But instead of a quick return, murder rates have gone up, just in time for the debate over alternatives to policing to get a lot more contentious. So they've just mentioned there that um, it's had a massive resurgence and people are bringing attention back to it because the police are put in, because the government or the local um, government are putting um, more investment into it. What I would say is um, this, when it comes to a lower level feuds, this can be really effective. But some of these individuals who are in gangs, literally, they want money. They don't care about shooting you or shooting past you. Some people, that th their dad's been shot in the head by an individual and they want revenge. Do you think you having a conversation with them is going to have a massive bearing on that? Some people have hate in their hearts. Um, if there's a serial killer walking around, um, you standing there isn't really going to stop them. So when you've got people with, se with severe mental issues, when you've got some severe, deep-rooted issues of hate in the community... You saying calm down, calm down isn't going to really work. And I've been there. I've been at murder scenes where family members of the murdered party turns up and they see the suspect. I can hug them. I can kiss them. I can give them a back rub. They're not going to care about any of that. They see red because someone has died. The only thing that person listened to is when I had to grab him and physically hold him against a car. And I had to use force to hold him against the car. Because life, is, life isn't always just someone stepped on my trainer at the club. Sometimes it's... You shot my brother, so now I'm going to shoot you. I can't say on one hand that we that we don't want police for whatever reasons, with all the violence breaking out on the south and the west sides of the city, but we're funding organizations that have no impact. That's so that lady said that these things have no impact. Um, if uh, based on what's just happened, it clearly does have some sort of impact. However, what I would say is. The guys who jumped out the car when that um, brave lady jumped in to try and interject and bring some peace and try and calm things down, they clearly were, didn't have a real driver incentive to try and hurt someone that day. Because even if you get a sane person, if any of those people, their family members were raped or shot or had been run over by the other individual, someone who they know saying calm down, calm down isn't going to change that. Some of these young boys who are selling drugs and they've been told by one of their older gang members, kill that boy there and then we'll be your family now and we'll look after you. You can be rich like us. You saying calm down isn't going to stop them for good. Um, it may stop them till tomorrow. It may stop them to the next day, but it's not going to stop it. Sometimes bangles in a prison cell is the only thing what stops it. And it's not perfect, but it's, it, it, it is the truth. Created a new challenge for advocates like Vaughn Bryant who have to prove that violent interruption really does work without getting caught up in the politics of defund the police. What's the relationship between these programs and policing? And so if we're doing our job, we hopefully will make the police's job easier. I do think that there's always going to be a place for policing because, you know, there are certain things that we just can't. So this guy's effectively echoed what I just said. This guy's got a head in his shoulders. He's not just saying things for a hashtag or a, or, or a tagline defund the police, um, abolish the police. This guy's saying he thinks the some of the funds from the police should be allocated towards their initiative. However, he understands the police are still needed, the police are still important because there's some things that they just can't handle. This guy's got his this guy's got his head screwed on. The only thing that I would say is these guys need to be working like this with the police. That could work together so well. In the UK we have police community support officers. But people see them in the same way that they see the police, just another pig walking down the street. If these guys could be the community support officers, um, they don't carry weapons if they don't need to, just, just some vests so they can't get killed. People know that they're not a threat. They can speak to people and be respected. Potentially, this is something what could work. Handle. So we just want the police to be better and more responsible, and we want to be a part of that solution. This model of intervention mm -hmm. has 20 plus years of oh, being yeah, in practice absolutely. here in Chicago. I mean, is it not working? Um, I would just say that it hasn't been consistent and sustained for a longer enough period of time. We are currently in 28 communities, but if you took the top 15 and put 10 million in the top 15, then you're gonna see some results over time, but you still have to sustain it. Well, you're talking about so 150, 200 million dollars is mm -hmm. kind of what you think it would take to really get into this, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. 
It's a significant amount of money. It's a significant yeah. amount of money, yes. Chicago currently spends almost 100 times more on policing than it does on violence and interruption. To balance that out, the city will need a lot more than vague promises. Andrew Papachristos has been tracking how violence intervention programs actually impact crime rates. Prior to COVID, we were seeing double-digit reductions in violence. And even after COVID, the neighborhoods that had outreach still did better than neighborhoods that didn't have it. Whenever you say to someone, these programs, you know, they've been around for a while, they're not, we're not seeing large-scale impacts, the response tends to be, we need more money, we need more staff, we need more time. When, when is it enough? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I think to assess impact, like whether something worked when you did have investment, you're talking a minimum of three to five years, right? And in fact, we've not invested. I appreciate them having a proper professional, a researcher, a professor on here. Um, it's not his fault, but he's not giving us the information that we want, really. Um, the guy's putting it to him. Do these things work? And he's basically saying, I don't know. It takes longer. We think it should work based on a little bit of data, what we had but we don't know. And the question is, we don't know if these things work. We do know that the police definitely do work. And we also know that people having better relationships with the police is what's needed to stop the police and the public from getting in these stupid interactions. The police need to stay, the police need to stay funded, but they need to be hiring people like these individuals who are going out into the streets because they've got a care and a heart for the community. Marry those two together, Better training, better individuals, you can have a better police force and a reduction in crime. I said to them for so long, why would they succeed in year one or year two or year eight? You have to build a profession, but it requires training, it requires investment. Is that complicating when the conversation over funding and supporting and building up these programs is tied into this larger debate about where should the police's role end? I think that's where we are right now, and I think it's super complicated. The thing I would caution against as we invest in public dollars is tying success to just crime rates. We don't do that with police, right? Because in which case we should be taking money away from the police just because crime went up. But we are at the most fundamental turning point in the city I've seen. This is the moment I think we got to get it right. It's an interesting point what he gives. Um, I would add a bit of a caveat to that. Around the world, the police will throw their resources into tackling, let's say specifically, gun crime. And for the next few years, after a spike, gun crime will go down. And then, because gun crime's gone down, these politicians, these mayors will say, okay, now we're going to focus on child abuse. And they'll throw resources into child abuse. That will go down, and then gun crime will go up. And then the next year, it will be theft. Theft will go down. Now child abuse and gun crime will go up. That's why murders on charts over the years go up and then down. That's why gun crime goes up and then down. So by saying that, oh, the police don't work because we don't stop crime. We do stop crime when we're solely focused on that. But because we don't have infinite funds and infinite officers to stand in every corner, we only can focus on really a handful of things at a time, which isn't ideal. The job of getting it right and doing it in a way that doesn't inflame the debate over defunding the police falls partly to Norman Kerr, the city's first director of violence reduction. Are you sensitive a little bit to the idea that this is somehow in opposition to policing? I don't think it's an opposition, and it shouldn't be pitted against police. It shouldn't be pitted against any other industry or program. Violence interruption, street outreach, is its own field. We're trying to legitimize it. We establish standards that all our programs are living up to because we want it to be legitimate. No question about whether it's needed or not, and it's not a flavor of the month. Are you worried that uh, if this program doesn't get a much bigger investment? I, um, offering this as another branch of social work, offering this as another um, branch of the social services that public needs. That's a fair point. Let's test it out. He's right. You shouldn't be pitted against policing because it's it it it, it it's not going to stop your school shooter. It's not going to stop your murderer. It's not going to stop your rapist. It's not going to stop your serial killer. It's not going to stop your gang members. It's not going to stop your burglaries. Pretty fast that public support will, will disintegrate around it? I'm always worried about it. I lose sleep over it. I mean, it, it's, it's just really frustrating that we have to do this sales pitch all the time around this. You know, if this were, you know, some affluent suburb, we wouldn't be thinking twice about it. The hard part is that from the outside, obviously, it looks pretty bleak, you know? I mean, shootings were 
at a near all-time high in Chicago last year. It's higher than that this year. Yeah. I mean, does it does it feel like it's not working? Well, you know what? I don't feel like it's not working because I know firsthand the progress that I personally have seen myself that I've made. But it looks like it's it, you have to kind of focus on small. I think a thing to consider is if you demotivate your police force, if you make your police officers go out into the street and feel like they're not going to be supported in doing their job and dealing with criminals, they're not going to go out of their way to do things which you would expect a police officer to do. And that's not to say that officers won't attend none unknown calls and try and save people's lives. Of course they'll do that. Um, a known person would do it, but the officer has the training to do so, so they would do that. But when it comes to practice stops on these young kids who are rolling around in cars with firearms ready to shoot people, when it comes to stopping people who are wanted for rapes who are on the run, you know, these people, they'll walk down the street, they'll try and evade police officers. And rather than looking at a person who's giving you shifty looks and thinking, I'm going to stop them and try and deal with them, a, a demotivated officer might think, it's not worth stopping them. It's not worth chasing them. It's not worth my career. I'm just going to let this one go because it might turn up um, being bad. And things like that can always lead in crime starting to rise again. Something to look out for. All victories in a way. Exactly. And I'll take that. See, that's the thing. I'll take it. I'll take it. If I can get a little pro progress out of a person who can't nobody get through, who won't even stop and give you the time of day, I'll take it. So, I think it's a really interesting concept, this idea of having these violent reductors out on the street doing their job. I think what this lady's doing, if she's going out there trying to protect people when she's putting herself in a vulnerable position, she's a hero for doing that. Um, but I think that it's fair to say you cannot take away policing from especially areas which are high in violent crime like Chicago. The, the figures speak for themselves. I think only 18% 18 18 of people in America actually support, support defunding of the police because it's not an idea which actually will work in real life. Tell me what you guys think. Tell me what you guys think of these violence reductors. Tell me what you guys think about actually abolishing the police and getting rid of the police altogether. I suppose you know my opinions by now, but I want to hear yours. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll be back with another one soon. Peace.